Hey everybody, it's Prereq, and um, these are kind of like the MCAT question of the day videos. Really appreciate if you're watching these. Um, and to, today's question is but a bit a bit by yesterday's question, which was about cellular organelles. So let's go into it. So today's question says, in the process of photosynthesis, light has to go from the outside of a plant cell all the way to the inside of a thylakoid, which is the site of the light reactions, if you've studied photosynthesis. To successfully make this journey uh, from the outside of the cell, to the inside of the thylakoid, or not to the inside, but just to the thylakoid. How many membranes does light have to interact with? So this question is hopefully not too hard to understand in terms of what it's asking for. It's saying, let's say this is our cell, right? Let's say this is our cell. I'm asking how, how many membranes does light have to interact with before it eventually uh, ends up where it needs to be, which is in the thylakoids of the um, chloroplast. So I, I drew the chloroplast here. And you may know that the chloroplast within it has this thing called the thylakoid, right? Oh, that's not a good idea. Let me draw it in red. Okay. Thylakoid. So let's just go straight into the question. Uh, how do we end up at the thylakoid? How many membranes does light have to pass through? And I'm going to draw the light in yellow. Here's my light to eventually get to the thylakoid. So first of all, right away you can see that the light has to first pass through this outside membrane, right? This outside membrane, which is the cell membrane, I'm going to redraw over it, is the number one membrane light has to pass through. Once you've passed through that membrane, now you can actually make the step forward and examine the chloroplast. So right now we already have our count at one because we have to pass the outside membrane of the cell. Now let's go to the chloroplast. The chloroplast structure is actually a double membrane, okay? And again, you may be thinking a bit about the endosymbiotic theory because that is slightly relevant here because there are two membranes to the chloroplast. Let's talk a bit first about this membrane right here. So this membrane right here is the outer membrane of the chloroplast. And the outer membrane tends to be a lot more porous. Um, the outer membrane regulates facilitation of ions. It's actually like the less specific membrane. It, it lets a lot of things through, okay? Um, and within the outer membrane, you actually get light coming through. So light will definitely have to come through the outer membrane. So there we go. That's the light coming through the outer membrane. Now let's move next up. What's next in this journey through the chloroplast? The next thing is this thing we like to call the intermembrane space, right? The intermembrane space is right between the outer membrane of the chloroplast and the inner membrane of the chloroplast. So light is not only going through the outer membrane, it'll go through the outer membrane and be in the inner membrane space for a bit. If we're pretending to be light, we've eventually gotten through the intermembrane space. Now what's next in our journey? The next thing in our journey is actually to pass through this guy, which is the inner membrane, right? So, so far, so far, if you were following along so far, then light has not only transversed the outer membrane, which is shown here of the chloroplast, but it has also transversed now the inner membrane. So how many membranes have we passed through so far? Well, so far we've passed through the original, um, I'm gonna just draw the num, I'm gonna num name them out. So, so far we've passed through the original cell membrane, which is the overall plant cell membrane, that huge cell membrane that covers the whole plant cell. Next thing we did, is that we pass through the outer chloroplast membrane, right? Okay. We pass through the outer chloroplast membrane. And then we just recently passed through the inner chloroplast membrane. So now we've done three so far. Is there anything else left? And believe it or not, there actually is. Um, also, I didn't quite mention this, but I also want to make sure we know for the sake of completeness that this intermembrane space is only on the scale of about um, 
5 to 20 nanometers. Okay, it's really small. I just blew up the chloroplast here, but this intermembrane space is very, very small. So now, what's the last step here? The last step is this thing within the inside of the intermembrane of the chloroplast, which is known as the thylakoid. Okay, but when thylakoids are stacked on top of each other like this, they are referred to as grana, which is kind of like a pancake, pancake stack of thylakoids. So there are hundreds of thylakoids within um, within each um, within each chloroplast. Okay, and as you may or may not know, um, I've only drawn one here for the sake of brevity and completeness. But the grana have their own membrane, and you may remember these. These are called the thylakoid membranes, and the thylakoid membrane is important because the thylakoid membrane is the site of the light reactions. Right? Remember photosystem 1, photosystem 2, photosystem, um, the photosystems interacting with light to um, make um, ATP and NADPH? Yeah, so if you're light, you have now come a long way. You've come through the outer membrane, you've come through the inner membrane, and then you have to hit this right here the um, grana membrane and to actually undergrow the light reactions. Um, and so now you've done, remember that the outer membrane was membrane number two, the inner membrane is membrane number three, and the last but not least was the uh, membrane of the thylakoid, which is membrane number four. Um, just for the sake of completeness, let's make sure we understand everything else that's going on here. Um, aside from the thylakoids, the inside of the inner membrane of the chloroplast is also known as the stroma is this alkaline fluid that used to be the uh, cytoplasm of this ancient prokaryote that this chloroplast came from. The stroma, though, is important because it's the site of the Calvin cycle. So the NADPH and ATP that are produced from the light reactions will eventually interact with the Calvin cycle, and the Calvin cycle will eventually make things which are ADP and NADP+, which then go back to the light reactions. So you have this strong interplay going on between the stroma and the um, and the thylakoids. But with that being said, we actually have approached our answer here. And the overall answer is, uh, I haven't drawn everything to scale here, but I want you to see that light, first of all, is coming into the plant cell through the main outer membrane. Then it's going through the outer membrane of the actual chloroplast. And once it goes through the outer membrane of the chloroplast, it has to go through the inner membrane of the chloroplast. And I didn't say this earlier, but the inner membrane, unlike the outer membrane, is a lot more specific. This, this is the more specific. And so not everything can pass through the inner membrane. Uh, the inner membrane is kind of like the guard uh, to make sure that the chloroplast does not get contaminated by anything random. Uh, and so that more specific inner membrane is going to be regulatory, and then it'll finally get the light finally gets to where it needs to be, which is the thylakoid membrane. And so, contrary to popular belief, light passes through four membranes. Okay, and this is always a shocker to a lot of students because they're so used to answering this question with three because they're so used to comparing the chloroplast to the mitochondrion and assuming that there are only two membranes. But remember the chloroplast actually has four, uh, I mean the chloroplast itself has three membranes, right? One, um, so these four membranes I'm referring to is the one of the plasma membrane of the cell. But then the other thing I was going to say is that the chloroplast has three membranes. That's something that not a, a lot of people know because they associate chloroplasts with mitochondria and mitochondria have only two membranes but chloroplast has three so if we now go back to the original question the original question here um, the answer here is going to be D which is four All right hope that was helpful see you guys in the next video